da 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 Hey, we're live. All right. Good morning, evening, afternoon, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And, of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso, as you can see down there somewhere. Yeah, right there. We are on episode 345, starting off February, uh, a wonderfully short month, hopefully, but with some amazing and talented people. <clears throat> so our first guest today is a, uh, a talented artist. He has his own comic. You may have seen him in a few anthologies from Pop Cap Games. Uh, he is known for his Hominids uh, comic, which is at hominidscomic.com. We're joined today by Jordan, and uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me, Kurt. Not too... No, well, you know, it, it's uh, good to have you on the show, finally, and uh, glad to hear that you were a, a listener of the show, first off. And Absolutely. You're, you're, you're actually on the show, so, you know, this is what I love about this type of show. We get great, talented creative people and and you're you're the next one on a long list that have been on the show here so oh, I'm glad to be here I mean it's it's always a weird thing talking to people kind of face to face who you know you only interact with online and through text and Facebook and Twitter and it's very impersonal so I'm kind of glad to to talk to you one on one <laughs> well you know let's start this right off the bat here because obviously we have a lot to get through but um Hominidscomic.com, you know, for those that have never actually read Hominids, uh, tell us what it's all about. Well, Hominids is a prehistoric action adventure fantasy. Um, the whole series is based around uh, actual existing hominid species, and the protagonists in this story are Neanderthals. And they live in this big, dense kind of fantasy jungle, and um, they're fighting with species that have actually existed uh, for the same territory and of course uh, a unsuspecting human comes along and and throws a monkey wrench in the whole thing and um, you know he's sick and destitute and instead of killing him they take him in and nurse him back to health and that's where the story jump starts and hilarity ensues uh, a, a little bit of hilarity. It's, I mean, it's it's high action, and um, you know, I I try and throw in, you know, some humor and some fun there for sure. Um, but I'm always focusing on on big action and, and kind of the epic scale of it. So, what got you? Uh, you know, I guess keep switching cameras. Keep forgetting about that. <laughs> so it's to the audio version where it's just talking. Uh, what got you into art? Um, I've been drawing my entire life. Um, my brother and my sister are both artists as well. Um, my brother, he's the older one. His name's Travis Kotzebue, and he's a fantastic artist too. I, I have links to his webpage and stuff that everyone should check out. Um, but, you know, we've both been into comics and, and uh, drawing our whole lives, and we just, we'd hang out, and what we would do is draw. And we'd draw our favorite superheroes and, and you know, geek out the same way you and I are geeking out, you know, and um, so we just were kind of those people who never grew up, and um, we just kept drawing and kept going, and, and so it was pretty early on I knew that this is what I wanted to do, and, um, you know, I, I went to school for it, I went to art school, and um, graduated uh, in illustration, so uh, that kind of let me go along a uh, a lot of different avenues and um, career-wise I ended up going into the video game industry and uh, kind of stepped away from comics altogether you know drawing them and all and I, and I knew I wanted to but it was it was all about finding the mechanism to do so um, you know and and I did you know apply for DC and Marvel as I'm sure most of us have done and um, you know we even did uh, some work for DC, uh, Travis and myself together. So, um, you know, we were kind of a team for a long time, and um, then it, I kind of got to the point where I was just like, I just need, I need to do my stuff. I want to do the stuff I want to do, and um, and that's kind of where it got started. 
uh, web comics wasn't necessarily something I had looked into for whatever reason. I, I'm not exactly sure, but um, it just it just wasn't this option that clicked in my head. I don't think I followed enough things. I didn't know the grand scale of all these great things that are out there um, until I actually started working at PopCap Games and. Um, you know, a lot of artists were into comics there too, and and a few people had their own web comics, um, namely uh, a girl named Lynn Hogan who does a comic called Pride Win. Mm -hmm. um, she basically kind of told me that there's this option out there where you can just do it, and there's nothing stopping you. There's nothing restricting you. Um, there's not a comic code or anything you got to go through, and you can just do it. And so. Um, you know, I gave up on excuses for not doing something and just just went in, went all in, and you know, I was super green to it, and and it was a huge learning curve, and and that's part of the fun of doing this, you know. So then, what what challenges as that as the the green fresh off the uh, Cintiq uh, comic <laughs> uh, did uh, did you have to go through in your first couple of years? Well, the 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 beginning, it was difficult, um, largely with the story and just like knowing exactly what you want to do. It was like, okay, I'm going to jump in. What What is it exactly that I want to do? Um, and and then the, the bigger the bigger issue is always the technology side. I mean, I'm I'm not super tech savvy. I mean, drawing's easy and that's fun and. Um, but I had to learn to put together a website and, you know, stuff I'd never done before, um, even in college, really. So, uh, you know, it, those uphill battles were were kind of intimidating and kind of scary. But, you know, I had friends and people who were willing to, to help out here and there. So, um, so that was an early challenge. And then, you know, just basically learning how everybody else does it, you know, how do you market yourself, how do you get yourself out there, and, um, you know, shows like like yours have been really indispensable and really helpful, actually, so. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you already have the interview, you don't have to flatter me anymore there, you know. <laughs> That's true, okay, <laughs> that'll be the only time. <laughs> hey, I'm not saying for you to stop, I don't, don't go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, let's uh, let's keep going here because with Hominids, uh, how long have you been working on that? that uh, since 2011. Um, mm -hmm. Well, that's not entirely true. Um, my first short story for Monsterpedia that you had mentioned um, was actually a Hominid story, and and the first volume of that was in 2010. So I did a six-page um, mini mini story with the Hominids characters, and that was my first time doing those characters in that format and um, that was actually the catalyst for me to, to to go forward with that story and keep going and it was just like okay I've started just don't stop just keep going <laughs> so um, so that was 2010 but we didn't release it until 2011 and I, I basically wanted to release my website with the release of that anthology. So I started 2010, released in 2011. Actually, February 2011. So I think today is exactly three years. So that's awesome. Happy birthday! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Where's the cake? Uh, or do you have to draw that in? <laughs> I think I have to draw it. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, you know, after three years of, of doing this and on a, a fairly consecutive basis, then obviously you, you, you've gotten into the habit of, of making sure that you have a page, you have your updates, mm -hmm. you have your schedule, you're, you know, keeping things active in that regard. Has work, uh, working with PopTap, PopTap Games, has that actually hindered or helped your, your overall, uh, well, not only creativeness, but your schedule. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've been able, I would have been able to do it without PopCap, actually. They're really supportive of people's personal projects, and, you know, not every company is willing to do that. Uh, a lot of companies, you know, they, they tell you it's a distraction, you're not allowed, it's in your contract to not do outside projects. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's not the case with this company at all. I mean, PopCap uh, has kind of helped nurse it in some ways. Um, they've they've been supportive of the Monsterpedia books. They've been supportive of, of my comic, uh, despite you know the fact it's a somewhat adult themed 
book and there's there's nudity in it and stuff like that and you know that uh, PopCap's a family company but uh, you know they're so they're not affiliated with it in any way of course but um, they're they're uh, just the people are super awesome and very supportive it's really cool Talk about your, uh, your first convention that you attended, either as an attendee or your, uh, or as an actual uh, person sell, uh, behind the table. Oh yeah, um, I, they were separate from several <laughs> years for sure. Um, my first real con was San Diego '03, um, and I was in college, so you know I was working on my senior project, was which, which was a collection of pages and stories. They were all submission pieces, so. Um, you know, I'd go to Dark Horse and, and take the submission piece they wanted and, and use that as my senior project. Um, so I took that to Comic-Con and, and submitted my portfolio and got all the portfolio reviews and, and also went as a fan. And um, that was pretty enlightening. I mean, it was such an overwhelmingly huge show, and it's, it was probably half the size it is now, <laughs> you know. Uh, maybe even and it's smaller than that. So um, that was it was incredibly fun. It was really awesome. Um, and then uh, my first time behind the booth was um, 2011 at Emerald City Comic Con. Um, I live in Seattle, so it's a it's an easy place to debut our books, and and um, that's where we always debut uh, Monsterpedia each year is at Emerald City. So um, that was interesting. I, w I was only maybe 15 pages into Hominids my first uh, time behind a booth. So it was, it was kind of interesting. You know, you're just kind of getting a feel of what a Comic Con is like at that time. So um, it, was, it was pretty enlightening. <laughs> well, it's got to be, uh, it's gotta be uh, a little daunting as well, too, especially selling something that, that you're very familiar with. Uh, and, and that you put time and effort into it, uh, obviously not to pitch it, I should say. But I mean, in terms of you know getting that first sale, you know, it's almost like a high five all around. Get the beer to the. It was really exciting. Um, yeah, there was there was a bit of that, and you know, uh, mostly it was just talking to people and and getting to know them. And every once in a while, they'd bite and and check it out. And a lot of them are fans to this day, which you know. You gotta appreciate, and um, but you also you gotta be ready for a bit of disappointment. You're not gonna go and sell out your first Comic Con, you know, and you gotta be prepared for that, and and know that that's okay as well, you know. Uh, the human interaction is one of the the key things about a Comic Con, and and uh, you know you. You find out a little bit of reality, so <laughs> a, a, a bit, bit humbling there. No. Uh, uh, yeah, a little bit. I mean, everybody's there uh, for their own agenda, and and nobody owes you anything. So, um, you know, and I remember being a fan. I I would walk down the aisles, and you know, you don't want to go to every table, and usually you want to glide by a lot of tables, and because you want to get to the things that you like. So, I, at, at the very least, I remember it from a fan's perspective. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I mean, I, I've been doing Comic Cons each year, and I try and add a new Comic Con uh, every year, and, and do at least three. Uh, so I, I've learned a lot from it, and my booth is a lot, a lot more clean, and and um, you know it's it's fun. I love it. I I always go. So. <laughs> Have you uh, taken a trip across the border and done any uh, Canadian shows there? Not yet, but I really want to. Um, I, I'd love suggestions for for uh, which ones you think are the best. I want to go to Calgary. Uh, I've heard a lot of people talk about mm -hmm. that one. Um, yeah. Well, you got Vancouver's a little closer than Calgary, I think. That's true, and I've talked to a couple people to come up there, but um, no one's sold me on uh, like the best show to do up there. Mm. Uh, sorry, I'm from the southeast area. So <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll ask the followers on, on the social medias there which uh, which Canadian convention out west is the best. Yeah, any chance I can get to go to Vancouver, I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> I always want to go up there. Uh, me and my wife will either go to Portland or we'll go to Vancouver. Um, to get away from Seattle, so. 
<laughs> you see, you change from rain to slightly less rain. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> it's it's like a vacation away from your home, but it is almost identical. <laughs> Well, let's let's head back into the comics aspect. Here. Sure. Um, you know, being being a fellow artist that you are, are have you uh, have you done any any uh, I guess not mentorships or internships for for those that are just trying to get into the business? But have you gone to say like done the, the high school circuit or anything like that, or been invited to local universities? Uh, I haven't. Um, Basically, so far with this comic, it's it's pretty much been a one-man show, and um, I'm just each week I'm just getting sitting down and just drawing as much as I can. Um, I'd love to bring somebody in at some point, um, but for this first book, it, it's one of those things where it's just like you want this book to be your own, and and um, you know m to make sure that you can do it and. And uh, Hominids is going to be um, the first book will be six issues basically, um, and then then I do want to branch out and and go out there and um, you know I have talked to a few people at work who they have interns and stuff and they talk about how much of a godsend it is and <laughs> so um, you know I may be a, a bit foolish not jumping in right away but um, you know I I would love to. Um, I would love to mentor somebody at some point and and um, do even even some you know personal teaching stuff. So um, it's it's not it's not a not possibility, but uh, I I haven't done it yet. Hmm. Short answer, no. <laughs> well, I, I like the fact that you know with your artwork as I'm as I'm looking through it, uh, you know you, your facial features, your your you know your expressions are mm -hmm. are really nice compared to some that just kind of do a standard feature. A standard Thank you. Throughout. Um, yeah, expressions and emotions are really important. Um, I, I think especially in comic books because uh, you know, especially in a comic book story, you go to each one and it's just a bunch of people gritting their teeth um, or looking at the ground, looking stoic. You know, um, and so. When when there's stakes in a story, you know you want the characters to actually look like they care about something and <laughs> and have different reactions to it. So um, you know that's for page for page. I probably focus on on expressions and facial features the most. So well, it, it, you know, as in your your shadows, your shading are are interesting as well, and it's. It's just I'm uh, going through, and you 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 know you, de you definitely understand your your contrasts, and you know your craft well, and you understand Thank your you. characters too. So, so there's definitely a lot to to enjoy and, and look at and see behind the panel, behind mm -hmm. the actual characters, and kind of understand as to uh, what's going on, or at least you know try to figure it out as you read along. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. <laughs> your website's interesting because uh, normally you're used to the standard setup of. Okay, here's the uh, you know here's the page. Click next. Uh, yours is a, a nice feature. It's like arrows and all that. Thank you. Um, I I did want to go with something else, and um, the the major reason is each time I go to a web comic, um, you're basically spoiled by the latest page. So if you're a new reader, the first thing you're going to see is the the last page of the book, and you know, uh, for whatever reason, that always uh, irritates me because I don't, it's it's like skipping to the end of the novel and reading the last page, you know. <laughs> um, and I, I wanted something where you could read the whole story and then just click out, and then your entire archive is right there. So I wanted that to be my my main page, but kind of in an interesting way. I didn't want it just to be a list of stuff. So. Um, Originally, that layout, I was going to have it kind of like a map, mm -hmm. and um, each chapter was going to go along the curvature of the background image and and follow the story kind of the, the way a map would. And um, I tried that out, and pretty much everybody hated it. And <laughs> it was just like, this is totally unorganized. We can't, we can't do this. We don't even know what to look at. So I... Uh, I standardized it a little bit more and, and just had it go straight across, but 
I still kept a, a lot of that, and that's why I have the little vines connecting everything together. Um, but now it just goes straight across the page. Do you enjoy uh, black and white more than you enjoy color, or are you, are you indifferent? No, I color definitely. Um, it it brings a story to life and and makes it stand out, and it's the reason I switched to color after the first chapter. Um, really, I mean, you look at a black and white book, and it it really works for certain things. But with hominids, I mean, you got a vast jungle world where just color is going to be, you know, just requiring to be pushed out. And uh, that first chapter was really a test of whether I could do a comic all the way through or not. So it, it's kind of like a pilot episode. Um, it, it feels a little bit different from the rest of the book. And to me, that's okay, because that was my biggest learning curve. But a after that, I, I had to ask myself, you know, can I do do it in color, and um, so I gave it a try, and it, it wasn't that much of a leap to color anyways, because I was, I was pretty much shading everything in black and white already, so it was just, just the next step of just adding a little bit of color here and there, so um, yeah, I, I prefer color, definitely, at least for this book. It, it's definitely worthwhile. Uh, yeah, the, I, in looking at your first chapter compared to your third, you know, uh, well, I, I appreciate black and white art for the sake that you know it, it shows that you know how to use value and range and all of that stuff. Right. Uh, color just kind of just makes draws your eyes. To Absolutely, uh, you, it makes you want to click on something. It makes you want to look at that, especially if you have a lot of vibrant colors and and um, you know, I I want to go back for that first chapter, especially when I uh, start selling printed books, um, the, the graphic novel, I want the whole thing to be color and, and you know, unified. So I'm going to go back soon and start coloring it, but you probably won't see that until, until you know, the book is done. <laughs> oh, sure, leave me waiting. I guess <laughs> I can do that as well, too. <laughs> You know, when you when you look at everything that you've accomplished here, with with the comic, with with your your yourself and your career, um, where do you see yourself in the next few years, either personally or professionally? Um, they kind of go hand in hand. Um, so I I want um the first book to to be of course printed as a nice um, a nice graphic novel that I can sell and I'm still working around whether or not I want to go through a publisher or um, you know self publish it I'm still working out those kinks I think the best thing for me is to kinda of just weigh my options and try at all of it and see what happens so I'm working on a pitch right now for the book and and um, see if I could have anybody pick me up and and you know my secondary option is is to self publish it and do a Kickstarter and things like that um, but I I you know before I make that decision I always like to look to to people and get advice for stuff like that I know a lot of people say self publish you know you get a hundred percent of the profit and stuff but at the same time with the publisher you know there's there is that name brand to it. If if somebody like Image picked it up, mm. I mean instantly people are looking at that logo up at the top, whether that's good or bad. You know they're more inclined to pick it up. So yeah, I, I'm not. I don't have a, an exact decision, and and um, I'm I'm still open there. So I the book's at a place where um, I can weigh those options now. So um, it's not solidified yet. Mm. Oh well, yeah, obviously you have a you have a community uh, around you as well. You have great friends that you've connected with throughout the years too. It's not like you you don't have options to to ask and and weigh your options as you. Exactly, friends. exactly, and um, you know that circle of friends is is ever important. And um, you know we'll see as long as the book is out. That's that's what's important to me. Um, and then uh, beyond that. Uh, book two is is uh, where I want to go after that, and and um, hopefully it'll depend on what happens with book one. Um, 
with how I do book two. So um, that'll that'll be important, though. Um, you know, I got a lot of plans with the universe and how I want to take it. So book two is going to be a total roller coaster ride. <laughs> so. Uh... How has social media then helped you not only uh, with promoting your your book but also uh, improving yourself in terms of uh, being a self marketer? Mm -hmm. um, it's it's interesting to I, I try as many as I can. Um, you know, Facebook and Twitter are all, of course huge, um, and uh, a lot of people have found the book through that, um, and. Uh, you know, my my most consistent followers usually you know comment there rather than commenting at the site and and let me know what you think what I think there. So uh, they're really invaluable. Um, I kind of gave up on Tumblr a while ago. Um, you know, the people who gave me advice they said you know get that Tumblr account and just you know post as much as possible. But you know if it's if it's not sticking and people aren't you know. Uh, not retweeting, but reblogging. Um, then you know, give it up and and focus on just a few th small things. Um, so I gave up on that until recently, because it takes one person to find it and and reblog your stuff, and it and it goes viral all of a sudden, and it's kind of exciting. You're just like, oh my gosh, what what in the world happened? So uh, maybe I should rethink this thing and and post there, you know, and and people eventually find it you just it's in at it's at times that you're not expecting it you know so I didn't give up on it I, I'm back on that too so really right now I'm, I'm trying to get the comic out to as many faces as possible so um, you know hominids is at places like Tapastic as well um, and it's kind of fun to post there because uh, it's a different way to view the comic. Um, it's really easy to see it on mobile, which is the biggest selling point. Um, I mean, it just looks so crisp and clear on your iPhone, and um, I, I actually really like looking at it like that. And um, I post it scene by scene there, so you know you'll see three to four pages at a time um, in one long infinite canvas, which is really fun to see. And um, I'm posting at Manga Magazine too, um, mm -hmm. and I've gotten some new fans there, and um, everybody's really supportive at those different sites, and everybody's got their little place they like to go. So, um, you know, as long as you're not overwhelmed, it's worth going to those places and, and making yourself known. It just takes time and effort like everything else. In <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. the, the biggest thing I've learned is you got to be patient. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. if people aren't going to come flocking to you the second you say, I'm here. Look at me. <laughs> look at how my majestic my stuff is. Just look at it. Everybody follow me, and it just doesn't work that way. <laughs> you know, um, like I said, <laughs> why haven't you come? I'm here, and you're not here as well. What's the deal with that? <laughs> um, you know, it's just being patient and, and, and kind of making friends and... Uh, and you know the people who like your stuff, they'll they'll like it for a long time if you treat them well. So, um, so yeah, social media is invaluable for sure. <laughs> well, what about um, you know? Obviously, you follow a lot of artists. You've you've connected with a lot of artists as well in in your career. I, I'm not sure if you've done any collaborations with any anyone uh, in the past. Uh, um, I, I have um, largely uh, my brother, who mm -hmm. um, right, right. who you know we've done uh, a lot of projects together. I mean, um, we did stuff for we did a poster for DC. Um, we did some stuff for uh, Heroes when the show was on. We yeah. worked on the we worked on the online comic, um, and we've done some trading card uh, illustrating and stuff like that. Um, I helped uh, Ethan Nicole with the banner for uh, Bear Mageddon, which was fun. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, my buddy Noah Moss is actually the color artist on that. Um, nice. And uh, he was in the first issue of Monsterpedia. Um, so, uh, 
I yeah, I've I've worked with of course I work with people at the office all the time, but um, you know uh, their collaboration in Monsterpedia is is huge. I mean we we all learn from each other so much, um, so so that's pretty exciting. And um, I've done a couple commission um, short stories. Uh, I did one that uh, hasn't been released yet. I don't know how much I can talk about it, but um, it's kind of an alien space story and. Um, it was it was fun to work on somebody else's story and just be the illustrator and and get a script and it's it's fun to do that every once in a while and it's worth it's a worthwhile exercise. So. Is there any is there anyone that you'd like to to say work with in the future though something that would put the proverbial feather in the cap? Oh man, um, that's a good question. There's a lot of people I'd love to work with. Um, it, largely, I think the kind of collaborating um, I love doing is just talking about the industry a lot. Um, at, at conventions, I talk to Travis Hansen a lot, and he's just he's one of those guys who loves to talk about stuff and spread his knowledge and and um, you know it. He's the type of person who's always busy and working on his own stuff, but I I would certainly do something with him for sure. Um, I'm a big fan of Jason Brubaker Remind. Yeah. Um, if I, I would do something for him for free, no problem. <laughs> um, and then, um, yeah, I mean, anybody in the the major industry. Oh, I, you know, I really love Lacket Daisy Cats. Yes. And um, but I mean, she is she's a head above almost everybody. Uh, so I don't see why she'd want to work with anybody else, but um, I, I, I mean, there would be a lot to learn uh, there, so um, that'd be incredible. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> oh, you talented artists. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think what else here. When it comes to this comic, do you see yourself changing your style, or are you comfortable with where you are right now? I'm comfortable with where I'm at. Um, Art-wise, I wouldn't change the style, but I would, I could definitely see it, um, you know, becoming better each chapter. And um, you know, you can become better with layout and composition, and see a huge difference without changing the style at all. You know. Um, in, in a way, you kind of can already if you look at the latest chapter, chapter five, and you look at the first chapter. Um, the style is almost identical, but uh, you know you can see the progression, you can see the learning there. Um, so style-wise, no, uh, I would like to keep it consistent, but um, you know, evolution and learning, uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I want every chapter to be, look better and better. So I'm not afraid of that. <laughs> what about your writing, though? I mean, um, obviously, you know, being an artist, you're extremely talented. But sometimes, doing the the other side of it, the the more tedious side, I guess you might call it, since mm -hmm. you're proficient in your art, uh, how do you find your writing? Is that uh, has that been a hindrance to you? Um, it's it's been a learning process, but I I love it. In a way, I, I love it almost as much as I love drawing, if not more. Um, you know, it keeps me drawing because I, I'm passionate about the story. Uh, otherwise, I probably would have given up already. But, um, you know, the learning curve, especially early on, was um, largely, you know, I had to learn a lot about dialogue. And, um, you know, I, I think you can see that as as the story progresses, it, it gets better. Um, you know, it's they talk different a little bit in the first chapter. You know, um, and the the pacing is quite a bit different too. And I had to learn, unfortunately, how to cut a lot of things and and edit and you know, be willing to get rid of scenes that you feel passionate about, whether you know you want to lose them or not. It if it doesn't if it doesn't work with the story, you got to get rid of it. And um, you can't get attached too much to any one scene. Um, so, you know, the the first chapter, it's mostly them hanging out and and roughhousing, you know, with uh, with bullies and stuff. And the story doesn't take off until chapter two, 
and um, you know, largely I was gonna it was gonna be a fairly character driven uh, comic book at first, and uh, the plot was just gonna jump in here and there every once in a while. But it's mostly gonna be these little adventures that the characters do and learn. And I realized that it was just too slow. You know, the pacing was wrong. And um, I actually got called out in my earliest uh, review that I got on a, on a, another podcast. And uh, you know, I was only 18 pages into the into the book at the time. But you know, they kind of called me out, and and they're just like, "Well, nothing's happened yet. There is no story." And and you know, I had to lick my wounds a little bit, but uh, I realized they were right. It it was uh, the deconstructing comics uh, podcast. And um, uh, once I realized they were right, I kind of I went back to the script and did a couple other drafts and and condensed the story down. Um, you know, they never would have gotten to the point that they're at in the story now. It would have been like chapter seven or eight that they they would have gotten there. I mean, he wouldn't have met up with uh, sorry the human character Akari uh, wouldn't have met up with the Neanderthals until. You know, probably five issues in, and <laughs> you know, so I had to, I had to just like really start chopping at the story, and you know, and really get to the meat of it. And I, I felt like that's when it started taking off, and that's where I really, you know, I got it. I kind of felt like I figured it out, and um, you know, I'm, I'm still figuring it out, but, but it feels like it flows and it feels natural, and I just, I totally enjoy it. You know, you fantasize about these scenes for so long. You know, it's in your head forever, and you can't get past these scenes until you write it down. You know, as soon as I write it down, then I feel like I can move on, and almost grow as a person in a way because you can think about other things. Yeah. So, um, you know, you just you at least got to get it down on paper. <laughs> <laughs> Even it, oh, go ahead. yeah. Even if that scene gets cut, you gotta write it down. <laughs> See, podcasts can be educational as well. It's yeah, awesome. I know, I know. Uh, and uh, a lot of my writing, I actually do on the bus because you know, when I get home, I need to be drawing and I need to, um, you know, be working on the next page. So a lot of times, on my way to the office, I'll just throw my headphones on and and uh, do the noise canceling and, and just start writing and it's you know it's only 20 30 minutes to get to get there but um, I'll have it down on paper and then I can go and edit it later you know yeah it's uh, that reminds me I have to update the last three episodes for uh, I have to update the last, the uh, last three episodes that I haven't uploaded audio wise but they're up video wise so it's it's one of those silly things that I have to do as a host but um, <laughs> is there anything that I haven't uh, asked you about that you'd love to to let the listeners and and watchers know because I'll make sure I get yours up on the audio version as well okay thank you um, <laughs> you know it's it's always a learning experience and talking and stuff is you know about the comic is always kind of a new thing and and um, you know it's a little humbling too because you know, you got to talk about yourself all the time, and it's, it's a little nerve-wracking. But um, largely, I think you know, I just like the natural conversation and and uh, seeing where it goes. So I mean, nothing is necessarily outstanding in my head. <laughs> well, you know, um, le actually, let me ask you four last questions. I usually sure. I usually s slide these in somehow, but I'll I'll fit them in here. Um, you know, everyone has that that one person that kind of inspires them down their path to where they are in their life right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that for you? Um, outside of people in my life and in my family, um, you know, somebody somebody who's in the industry that I always looked up to was certainly probably um, Bruce Tim and Paul Dini um, and the Batman animated series. I mean, yeah. I was. I was 11 when the show came out, and I mean, it blew my mind. I hadn't ever seen anything like it. You know, we grew up on GI Joe and Transformers, mm -hmm. and even even as a little kid, you know, this isn't exactly the way you picture it in your head. I mean, 
Um, and then when you grow up and you watch it again, it reinforces the fact that they're just not very good cartoons. <laughs> but you go back and watch Batman, and it's it's still incredible. It's still great storytelling. It's the best stuff I think those guys have ever done still. Um, so it, it it steered me the way I wanted to go. I, I knew that I, I wanted to tell stories, whether I was an animator or a comic artist. Um, and, and now I'm both, so... Um, you know, uh, that was definitely my biggest influence, I think. Yeah, I, I, I can agree with you. Um, Batman, uh, it was always Batman, Spider-Man, X-Men, and that, that kind of block of, of great cartoons. Yeah, uh, those early 90s cartoons. Early 90s, just... yeah. It survived after all these years, uh, well, except for the last season of X-Men. But that's beside the point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't wa- I haven't rewatched the X-Men stuff since I was since I was that age, but um, yeah. that's because Batman is just like that's how you have to compare it, and it's just it, it's not the same, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, moving on, then the uh, obviously you know you're very you're professionally successful. You know you've you've done many things in your life up until now, and you'll continue to do more things in your life moving on. Um, but are you personally successful? Personally, in my own personal life? Mm-hmm. Um, very much so. Uh, I, I live very happily up here in Seattle uh, with my wife and, um, and my cat, who I thought would maybe guest, uh, guest okay. appear on the show, but she didn't. So, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I, I live life uh, very happily. I, I make sure that no matter what my situation is, I, I enjoy it. I mean, this is the only life we got, and, and um, you know, we don't necessarily get to choose where we end up. You know, we all have our plans, and, um, you know, I had very specific plans growing up, and it, it just never is exactly that. Um, it's pretty close, actually, but uh, you got to roll with the punches, and you got to be happy no matter what. So uh, that's what I choose to do. How do you deal with your failures? Um, learn from them. Um, you know, it's it's a matter of of growing from a failure, you know, and and turning that failure into something positive. Um, you know, you you can't feel defeated by everything that doesn't work out. You know, um, you know, you can ask yourself, you can tell yourself you're an idiot and you have to quit, or you could say, okay, what did I do wrong and how do I fix it? What do I need to work on later? And and focus on those things uh, rather than focusing on how how it didn't work out. You know, so that, that's always been my mindset and how I look at things. The uh, the younger generation are, are going to watch this and listen to this on their various social medias and uh, and I hope so. electronic <laughs> devices that they have. You know, since apparently talking doesn't help, uh, <laughs> they're going to look for you at uh, towards inspiration. Uh, sorry, wow, let me start that again. <laughs> the younger generation are going to look towards you as as insp- as an inspirational person. Uh, Maybe uh, guiding them in, in their life, uh, be it subconsciously. Um, how can they become inspirational themselves? Um, by always working, you know, uh, do something that you love, and and you'll be an inspiration. And then you'll find something, an angle on it that no one's ever done before, and uh, and. Keep being inspired yourself, and you'll find a way to inspire other people. Sounds if you, good. yeah, if you become if you become numb to things and and find no inspiration in anything, there's no way you can find a way to inspire other people. So you got to be passionate, and as long as you're passionate, you'll find you'll find that way. That's good. I like. <laughs> And that was my that was my BS off the the edge of my seat answer. <laughs> I'm supposed to say that after I stop recording. <laughs> I'm just I'm just being honest. <laughs> uh, you sure you're not a pseudo Canadian with that one? Uh, <laughs> well, I'm very I'm very close to Canada, so <laughs> you're you're just over there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> 
all the way up there, tucked underneath Vancouver, and <laughs> <laughs> or so, something like that. Anyhow, <laughs> well, Jordan, you know, I just want to thank you so much for taking the time to, to come on this show, and, and and it was a wonderful, wonderful time chatting with you, and I look forward to seeing more from from Hominids and uh, and other work that you do as well. Thanks, and, Greg. Um, oh no, no problem. And, and what's the website we can go to, and uh, and when do you update? Uh, it's hominidscomic.com, and um, I update on Tuesdays uh, is when my page goes up. And then, um, you know, I have links to all my social stuff. Um, I try and post, you know, um, sketches and stuff when I can and uh, in between all, all through the week. So, um, but Tuesdays are my big days. So, <laughs> uh, hominidscomic.com. Awesome, that's great stuff here. And I hate to say it, but that ends this episode of TGT Media, episode 345, uh, with Jordan. Uh, can't pronounce your last name. That's all right, it's uh, Kotzebue. Kotzebue, thank you. K O T Z E B U E. Thanks, Kurt. And I, I really appreciate uh, having me on. And, um, you know, I've been wanting to talk to you for a long time. I really had a lot of fun. Well, stick around for a couple more minutes. We're just going to wrap this up here. And uh, with our, our telling of our next guests in February, because we have a, we have a, actually, we're pretty packed. Um, I, I would call this Comics Month, but, you know, almost every show has a comic in some way, shape, or form if it's not entertainment. But. Uh, this uh, next Saturday, I should say, we are joined by uh, another great comic that I was uh, was turned on to by, I think, an advertisement off of someone else's web comic. Um, if you've ever read the the comic Snow by Night, the cast or the crew rather, I, the artist and writer, <laughs> both will be on the show uh, next Saturday. So that's going to be a, a fun show. Um, the Saturday after that, we're joined today. Uh, we're, we will be joined by Jay Gray and Keith Wood, who are teaming back up again to uh, do more mi of um, Mysteries of the Arcana. Uh, I interviewed them a while back, and uh, they went through a few other artists, but now they're back to the original team. So that's great to see. Um, if you love, uh, you know, if you follow the TGT tournament number five, you'll know that. Dave Barrick won the tournament itself from last August. He's back on Sunday, February 22nd. And we're going to talk about girl power, and we're going to talk about, um, you know, other other fun stuff, because Dave's a great guy and with a great comic. Uh, and we might be able to slide in uh, Ryan Estrada as well from ryanestrada.com, who's a just a, 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 an amazing, talented guy that, that knows how to put together creative people for uh, amazing comic anthologies as well, too, out of uh, Korea. So, That's um, a great lineup. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty packed, I have to admit. Um, and, uh, and overall, I, I just want to thank everyone for watching and listening to the show. Um, you can Thanks, everybody. Me. <laughs> Thanks, Jordan. You can email me, Kurt, at tgtmedia.com. You can, of course, go to my Twitter at, at Kurt Sasso. Uh, and I have all the social media presence on TGT Media or twogeekstalking.com. Both will go to uh, the actual website itself. So... Thanks, everyone, for tuning in, and tune in for the uh, jam-packed February with Two Geeks Talking.